Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in our video. This one's going to be about seven signs or seven signs. I'm so used to making those seven signs, but these are seven things that I learned about the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you guys may be able to relate to this, the things I'm going to be going over, uh, what the Holy Spirit has revealed to you. Some of you guys might not, but let's get it. Let's go. The number one thing that I learned uh, about having the Holy Spirit is like one of the, in the beginning stages is it's about relationship over religion. Like we've been programmed at a young age that you know, the religious program, like you got to go to church on Sundays. Uh, you got to read your Bible, you know, once a week and stuff like that. But you really want to have a heart for God where you have a personal relationship with them over all the religious stuff you've been taught. And you actually want to read the Bible, not because someone's telling you to read the Bible or because your mom or dad's telling you to, or because your youth leaders or your pastor is telling you to. No, you want to read the Bible because you're hungry for the word of God. You're hungry to learn. Okay. It's not just because someone's telling you, you know. And I also learned that, you know, you could go to church on Sundays, you could, you know, be so religious, right? But you could be set, you could be extremely far away from God. So I learned it's all about a relationship over religion. In the book of John chapter 14, verse six, it says, no man can go into the father. No man can go into God, but first with the son. So it's about humbling ourselves and accepting Jesus Christ in our hearts. And, you know, realizing that we need him throughout this walk. We need him to be truly connected with the spirit because without, um, holiness no man will see the lord okay so that's the number one thing i learned about the holy spirit it's always a relationship like i'm telling you think about the times where some of you guys are married right a relationship with your wife your husband it's an everyday thing right um maybe they're on your mind all the time we all know how it is right it's just, you know, we want to have that same energy when it comes with uh god that same energy when it comes to the holy spirit is it's an everyday thing when you wake up man i'm telling you like this is like burning in my soul bro like it's all, and I love it. It's, I don't feel like this is a burden. I don't feel like this is bondage. No, this is freedom. No, this is this is true freedom. Okay, so number two is obedience. Oh, also real quick too, having the Holy Spirit. I didn't put this as a number, but just off the top of my head, it makes it a lot easier to overcome your, my flesh. It makes it a lot easier to overcome sin, um, addiction, stuff like that. That's one thing that I've learned. It's so much easier, right? When I was rejecting the Holy Spirit, the reason why I said it, when I, I'm gonna go over in number seven, I don't want to speak too fast, but uh, when I was re rejecting the Holy Spirit, when I wasn't hearkening to the voice of the Lord, like that's when, you know, those seven demons are like, you know, just, just giving over to darkness. But when I hearkened to the, uh, when I was obedient, which I'm going to go over the next one right now, it's like everything became easier. It became so much easier. So it's very important for those who are trying to walk, try the narrow path to have the Holy Spirit. That's the key. Okay. Uh, so next one up, as I was just saying, is obedience is key. Okay. Christ says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, okay? Now, I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments. You know, Christ had, I think it was over like a thousand commandments he has in the New Testament. Uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, get baptized, you know, stuff like that. I could go over a whole list, but obedience is key. When you, the Bible, Jesus even says that if you hearken to his words and do what they says, you will be built upon a rock. And those who uh, don't follow what he says they're going to be uh, like a sand so when the storms and tribulation comes they'll be swept away okay so obedience is key so when the trials and tribulations come when you're uh, you know obeying his teachings you're obeying the word your 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 faith is you're just gonna be bold bro like you're gonna stand firm like nothing could stop you nothing could shake your faith no devil no demon no agent could do anything because you know that you're you're like that rock and think about it like a rock right if you ever go to a beach there's like a rocky mountain it's like they're there forever, no matter if there's a, a tsunami or whatever, it's there. But if it's sand, the sand comes and sweeps away. Okay, so, and that's through your obedience. Like, there's a lot of power in obedience. And, you know, when we're obedient, one thing I learned too that I didn't write down is that God blesses you with more gifts. Okay, but God blesses you not just with gifts, but just blessing them in general. We know in Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, there's blessings for obedience and then there's curses for disobedience. Okay, so. Oh, being obedient is just like there's so much to gain from it. And yes, you know, it's not easy, but like I said, when you have the Holy Spirit and you're really hearkening to the voice of the Lord, it's so easy. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. not to say that I don't struggle at all, but like it's just so much easier when I hearken to the uh, Holy Spirit. So obedience is key. Remember, if you love me, not Mark the Messenger says, this is what Jesus says. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Number three is you must be set apart. Once once you have the Holy Spirit, bro, like and once you've received, once you've been baptized, once you've been born again, like, I can't even entertain the thought of going back into the world. Like, I just, it just, I can't. <laughs> like, it, that's, that's old. That's gone. You know, the Bible even says that 
um, to put to, to put away the old man, which is full of deceitful lust, and to put in the new man, which is full of, which is a holiness. I'll leave a verse somewhere right here because so I don't want to say that wrong. But I can't, when you when you truly have the Holy Spirit, like, I can't think about loving this world. Like, I, I can't think about going back. Like, I just can't think of that. Like, I might struggle with sin. I might, you know, fall short. But in terms of fully giving, going back into the world, like, this, that's like death. <laughs> that's like spiritual death. I can't see myself doing that, bro. I just can't. And, you know, I know some of you guys may struggle with that, loving the world. And best believe it is it is a stronghold. When you're in love with this world, it's truly a stronghold because the Bible says if anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in you. That's deep. If anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in them. Okay. Uh so the love of God is not in and I in that's in one John chapter two, verse sixteen. Okay, so like I truly understand, like I can't see myself like with everything God has blessed me with, the wisdom, knowledge, everything, you right? Like I just can't see myself doing that, like with me knowing what the world has to offer, death, waste of time, waste of energy, just I just can't see it. So that's one thing I learned about with the Holy Spirit. You got to be set apart. What does it mean to be set apart? It means to be holy. Number four is the fear of God, okay? When you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to have the fear of God. And what is the fear of God? Uh, the Bible talks about this in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. It says, they hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and uh, the, the evil way, okay? So... Once you have the fear of God, you're going to hate evil, okay? When you see these celebrities selling their soul, demonic rituals, the Travis Scott concerts, and all these wicked stuff, right? You hate that. Like, you have, you hate it. Like, it makes you mad. Some people in this world, they might watch this video, call themselves Christians, you know, you know, act holy, act, right, uh, you know, religious and stuff like that. But when they see their concerts, when they see their idols, they love it, okay? So that, this clearly just shows they don't have the fear of God in me. Because when I see that type of stuff, like, I really hate it. Okay, that's not what Mark the Messenger says. What the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So that type of stuff, light. When you have the light, when you have the Holy Spirit, you have the light. We can't just fellowship with darkness. Like this, it bothers our spirit, bro. It bothers it, you know. And this is a verse I'm gonna read to you real quick. This is in uh, Proverbs chapter fourteen, verse twenty six to twenty seven. It says, "In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and His children shall have a place of refuge." You. Uh, the fear of the Lord is a, a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Uh, this is actually the verse I want to read. So this uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is, a, is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way and the frown mouth do I hate. Okay? Ooh, that's deep. So it's the hate, the hate evil, right? Pride, arrogancy, you know, the self-righteous stuff. And the evil way and the frown mouth do I hate. So when you have the fear of the Lord in you, you're going to take on these traits. And the Bible even says this is the whole duty of man to fear God and keep the commandments. Okay, so that's the whole duty of a man. Number five is you will love to give. You'll love to give more than receive. And I, I'm really starting to understand when Christ says that you know it's better to give than receive. Like when I receive, like yeah, it feels good. But when I give, it's just a better feeling. And like I, it's like I actually like love. To, I love to give. Like that's I don't know. It wasn't like this before. Like it wasn't like this in the years past. It was more and more like I want to. I just want to receive, receive, receive. Not to say I never give, but like I was more like I want to receive, receive more. But once I understood Acts chapter twenty verse thirty five, it says I have, this is Christ speaking. It says, well, actually, um, this is I think this is uh, Paul it says I have showed you all things how that so that laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than receive okay when you have the holy spirit you're not so to the people of this world when they give like five dollars ten dollars like it's a burden to them you know it's like they, they're like selfish and like stingy that like a selfish energy but when you have the holy spirit you love to give you love to help your brother you love to help your sister or love to help your neighbor you love to help those in need okay like it's just we don't think of it like oh you got to pay me back or you know you know the people of the world that they think that way and I used to think that way too, but now like I just love giving, I love helping people because I understand there was a time when I needed help and I wish I had that type of support, you know? So um, if you can't expect help from other people, you can't expect support from other people if you're not supporting other people too as well. So that's one thing I learned about the Holy Spirit, guys, is that you'll love to give more than you receive. Okay, there's nothing wrong about receiving, but you're just gonna have a, more of a love to uh, give. This is also in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, Every man according to as he proposed, uh, proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. Okay, so that's who God loves, man. Those who are who have a kind heart and, you know, who are generous and, you know, love to give. Number six is the Holy Spirit will transform you completely. 
the way I talk, the way I dress, the people where I surround myself with, that's what the Holy Spirit will do. It will completely transform your entire life. Uh, now, it won't happen overnight. This is like a seasons, years, months uh, that it took that place. And, you know, through, through all that, it was slowly transitioning. You know, I do had, I did have some re uh, residue, in, you know, in me that, you know how it is, you know how it is with residue, like you still have that, you know, spots that you got to clean up. And that's how it is. And, you know, in due time, you keep on walking with the Lord, you know, you, you'll be become clean. But, you know, the Holy Spirit has truly transformed. I, there's certain things I can't do, certain music I can't listen to no more, uh, certain words I can't say, I can't speak out of my mouth no more. Like there's, a, there's so much, man. There's so much. So that's what the Holy Spirit will do. It will transform your mouth, uh, your mind, your soul, your spirit. And uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transforming in the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect and will of God. Okay, so always, man, the Holy Spirit will transform you completely. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. Number seven is I've had, one thing I learned, this should have been number one, but um, I've had the Holy Spirit all along. And what I mean by that is, this is a verse in Jeremiah chapter one, verse four to five says, and then the word of the Lord came into me saying, before I have formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before that came forth out the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Okay. I remember times when I was younger, when like, there were so many warnings. I had dreams. You know how God speaks to us in, in our dreams. I just had people come up to me that God was using that. I believe there are angels because in Hebrew chapter 12, verse two, it says, be not forget forgetful to entertain angels for some have entertained angels unaware. Um, there's so many times where I look back in my life. I'm like, wow, I had the Holy Spirit all along. The only thing was I was, you know, rebelling. I was in the rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Okay, so uh, I would rebel against the Holy Spirit. I would reject the Holy Spirit. I would ignore the Holy Spirit. And it came with consequences. But as I got older and more mature, and when I fully surrendered my life to God, I understand like, wow, I had the Holy Spirit all along. Now I have the wisdom, I have the knowledge, I have the understanding to know between right and wrong. Uh, I'm more aged and more mature. So I understand like, okay, there's certain things I can't do no more. And, you know, best believe guys, when it comes to obedience, God will bless you abundantly. So one thing I learned about the Holy Spirit, it's either the Holy Spirit or no way. This is the only way in life. <laughs> this is the only way, man. So receive the Holy Spirit before it's too late. Give up this world. Love God more than you love anything else. That's really what it's all about. You really want to have a passion, a burning desire to love God, to please God, and to live for Him. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. Seven things I learned about the Holy Spirit. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video on all social media platforms. And if there's anything that you learned from the Holy Spirit, feel free to leave in the comments below. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.